Now in this lesson we're looking at equivalent ratios. Now by way of illustration, we'll look at three quarters as a fraction firstly. Now if we times the top by two and the bottom by two, an equivalent fraction is formed. Three times two is six, four times two is eight. So we had three quarters and we can change it to six eighths. They are an example of equivalent fractions. Now in a similar way, equivalent ratios, three to four, if we times the first one by two, made it a six, times the four by two, made it an eight, three to four is in fact the same as six to eight. That is an example of equivalent ratios. Let's look at a few examples. We're asked to complete the ratios. The first one we have five to two, and the equivalent ratio is 30 to something. We need to fill in that something. Well, we can see that we've gone from 5 to 30, and that requires a multiplication by 6. So simply we multiply the 2 by 6, and when we do that, we end up getting 12. Terrific. Example 2. We have 2 to 5 to 8, and it equals some ratio where there's two numbers missing. We know though that part of it is 24. And that 24 matches up with the eight. So the eight to get to 24, we need to times by three. So we just make sure that we times each of the other numbers by three as well. So firstly, the two. Two times three will give us the six. And the number in the middle, the five, times that by three, and we get 15. Excellent. Our third example, 5 to 8 equals 12 to something. Well, in this case, we're not going to get a whole number involved as our multiplication. Let's look. 5 times what makes 12? Hmm, certainly not a whole number, is it? What we need to think of if we do the reverse, we start with the 12, we divide by 5, and that gives us 2.4. In other words, we must have multiplied the 5 by 2.4 to get 12. So we must do the same to the 8. So if we have 8 and we multiply by 2.4, we end up getting 